Hey guys, CP Morty here back with another video and today we're going to show you how to install some LEDs. Now this may sound very, very familiar for this channel. In fact, we've done another video in this same case about installing LEDs, but I've gotten many requests to redo the video as it didn't necessarily go into enough detail. So today we're going to be doing exactly that, going step by step through everything you need to install your LEDs. Now first off, there are a few different LED kits on the market. You can buy just rolls of LEDs which are usually a lot cheaper than buying pre-made ones and is a lot more customizable as you can choose your lengths and what colours you want and everything like that. However, they're not pre-done and they can require a lot more work than just buying prefab ones ready to go into your case. Something like the NZXT Hue Plus kit is also to a really awesome option as you can basically choose what you want and control it through software. Again, the downside side is it's not as customizable as just buying a roll and also too can get a little bit expensive. For 10 meters which is what we picked up today I paid five dollars for these LED strips. They're waterproof and ready to go so it is definitely a lot easier and a lot cheaper to do it yourself. So let's get started in what we need to actually achieve this DIY mod. First and foremost again is the LEDs themselves. We picked up these rolls of LEDs for I believe five to ten dollars on eBay and they're linked down below. Everything that we talk about here will be linked down below for you guys to grab. There's white and green options that we have here today but there's also to a slew of other colors so do do your research and find out what you're going to be using. Also too if you do pay a little bit more than five and ten dollars you can even get RGB strips with little remotes and control boxes and they're still cheaper than the prefab ones out of the factories. We're also too going to need to get ourselves some sort of power source. So for this we've got ourselves a Molex to SATA adapter or just straight Molex to Molex adapter or some sort of Molex adapter to pick up our power. We need to at least have a 12 volt and a ground to run these LEDs as they are 12 volt LEDs. Now in terms of Molex adapters there's quite a few options out there. You can grab yourself one of these guys which is a Molex to dual SATA. You can also too grab yourself a Molex to Molex adapter or you could get yourself a straight Molex to well basically solder your own cables on the back of them. So it really comes down to what you want. These guys, Molex to SATA, are usually very common and very easy to find and something that I do recommend. You can run two different things off them or you could just chop the other one off and go from there. But you need some sort of way to connect them into the power source, which is usually a Molex adapter. Keeping it on the power topic, we're also too going to need to grab ourselves some cables or leads to actually connect the LEDs to those Molex adapters. So for this, you can either grab yourself an old power supply and just chop off the cables and use them, or you can buy yourself specific cables to go ahead and run inside your system. Chopping them off a power supply isn't actually half that bad, and this is what I've got here today is just old cables cables that I pulled off old power supplies and they usually do the trick. However, with that being said, do keep an eye on what kind of cables they are as if they're only signal wise, you probably want to stay away from them as they're not going to be able to stand up to the currents and amps required to run these LEDs. Whilst they're not a lot, it's probably just best to stick with your main positive and negative cables. A benefit of pulling it off the power supply is you know that they're rated to run with power supply voltages and also too, it's a whole lot cheaper than going out and buying specific wiring. If you have a couple old computers lying around, pull the side panel off and do some snipping and make sure you then disable the power supply so no one can actually use the system. You may also too want to grab yourself some switches. Now switches come in all different shapes and sizes, whether they're toggle switches with LEDs on them like this little silver guy, or they're more your standard sort of plastic LED switch, you may want to throw a switch in there. The reason why you might want to do this is if your PC is in the same room that you sleep in and you want to leave your computer on overnight, those LEDs are going to keep you up for quite some time. So having the ability just to switch them off is really, really awesome. It also too helps out if your computer's on the desk with you and you want to watch a movie and don't want to have a whole lot of lights on around you, you can flip the LEDs off and keep the computer running with no problems. I only discovered this recently and it is an awesome addition to your LED kit to have some sort of switch to turn them on and off. Again, do make sure the switches are rated for 12 volts, which is what we're working with here today. And finally, if you do have cable sleeves 
linked cables in your system, you may want to pick yourself up some extra sleeving in case you want to match the wires of the LEDs to the rest of your system as it can look a little bit ugly if you have some really nice cable sleeve cables in your system and then some LEDs with like various orange and red and black colored wires coming out of them. So do keep that in mind. If you've sleeved your cables, you may want to pick yourself some extra ones to sleeve the system. For our system today, we don't have any cable sleeve cables, so we're not going to worry too much about that. Then finally, we're going to need to grab ourselves some tools and resources to actually wire everything together. First and foremost, you'll need to grab yourself a soldering iron as we're going to be doing some soldering of wires together. If you're not really confident with a soldering iron, I'd recommend then just going ahead and grabbing yourself a standard LED kit. You do need to do soldering as twisting and taping is not the way to go and over time that tape will break down and start to go sticky and just basically fall to pieces, thus giving you a higher chance of your computer catching fire. So soldering and heat shrinking is very important. Keeping on the topic of soldering, we also too need to grab ourselves some heat shrink. Heat shrink is important to make sure that we don't short anything out and unlike tape, it won't break down as fast over time. But it's also too handy to have some electrical tape on hand just for testing, so you may want to pick that up as well. Finally, we're going to need some cutting tools, we're going to need some wire cutting tools, we're going to need some scissors and blades as well, just to get through all the plastics and metals and all those types of things that we're going to be working here with today. Finally, we're also too going to need to grab ourselves a toolkit of some sort. We have the iFixit 54-bit driver kit here today that will get through all of the computer and help us to mount everything up inside of our computer. You don't necessarily need the iFixit toolkit, but it's just something that I personally have and can definitely recommend. So with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is remove the side panel on our desktop PC as well. If we leave it on, it's going to be pretty hard to install the LEDs. Next up, we're going to need to make the choice of where we're going to mount the LEDs. Are we going to mount them inside the case or actually on the side panel itself? Some people do prefer to mount it on the side panel, whereas other people like to mount it in the case. Personally, I don't mind either way, I just like to throw it in the system and have some nice LEDs in there, so this step is totally up to you. Once you've made your choice of whether you're going to mount it inside the case or on the side panel, we then need to figure out how much actually LEDs we need to install. You can grab yourself a ruler or you could just measure out how much it is by rolling the strip out and marking it out. For this case, we're going to mount them in both the top and bottom locations. So we're going to measure it out like so and then chop them to size. Just a quick hint here, it is always best to chop a little bit more than you think as you can always remove from the LED strip but you can never add anything more. Once we've gone ahead and chopped them down to size, we are ready to get into the cabling stage. If you're going to be running waterproof LEDs like we are, we need to remove this sort of plastic rubbering sheet. And unfortunately, I don't have some sort of quick way of removing it. Just simply take your blade and carefully cut away at it until you get down to the actual LED strip itself. Once we do so, we can get ready to start soldering. Plug your soldering iron in and tin the tip. We're going to be tinning the wires themselves and then soldering onto the strip as I've found that the easiest and cleanest way to install LEDs. Whilst you're waiting for the soldering iron to warm up, we're going to take our wire cutters and go ahead and strip back some of the plastic sheeting on the actual wires themselves, so we can go ahead and tin the tips. At this stage, your wire should be stripped back and your soldering iron should be heated up. Go ahead and tin the tip of the soldering iron and then we're going to go ahead and just tin each of the ends of the wires. I like to go ahead and apply the tin to the actual tips of the wires rather than the strips themselves. This gives a cleaner look and just a cleaner overall install. Once all the tips of the wires have been tinned, we can go ahead and take our LED strips. Place the ends on the end of the strip and basically push down with your soldering iron until it melts and solders to the surface. At this stage, the LED strips themselves will be quite delicate, so don't go around throwing them as your soldering points may break off. Now at this stage, we should have all our wires wired up and our LEDs ready to go. One thing you should have noted is also to the polarity of the LEDs, or the positive and negatives as to which wires they are. For this example, we wired our ready orange colour to the positive and our black to the negative, something that's pretty much standard in positive and negative. Once everything's soldered together, Together, you should have something that looks a little bit like this, a really cool looking wiring harness ready to go. Jump back over to your computer and go ahead and remove these sticky pads from the LEDs and now you can go ahead and put them into your computer. Wire them up and you are good to go. 
home. Now, if you were using a switch, it's very, very simple. Either route the positive or negative cables to one side of the switch, and then the others come out to your power supply Molex adapter. So if you're running two LED strips, you should have two connections on one side and one on the other. This will allow you to break the circuit to turn the LEDs on or off. But if you're not using a switch, just wire them straight to the Molex adapter. Now that that's all done, plug the Molex adapter in like so to the power supply and basically power your computer up and watch your LEDs shine. Now, if your LEDs don't turn on where your computer turns on, there are a few things you can do. Number one, make sure all your connections are connected properly. Sometimes Molex connectors like to wiggle around and come loose, so make sure that is connected properly. Then go ahead and make sure that all your polarities are correct, or all the positive and negative wires are connected to the positive or negatives. Also too, make sure you're grabbing a 12 volt signal. You need 12 volts to run these LEDs as they run on the 12 volt circuit. If all else fails, you may actually just have a dead LED strip and there may not be anything you can do about it. And there we have it, installing our LEDs step by step and it is actually really simple. If you're not very confident with using a soldering iron, grab yourself some bits of cable and just practice soldering them together. Chop them, solder them and keep going until you get really confident. It's a really awesome skill to have and soldering cables for your computer can also to help you out in other places such as working on cars and other electronic devices as now you know how to use these awesome new tools. Otherwise guys, that's about it for today's video. If you have any any questions or get stuck on any steps, let me know down below and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Otherwise guys, thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.